Welcome to Lotus Comics Press. We have an exclusive here with Brad Dwarf, which is well known as the voice of Chucky, guys. How amazing and an honor is it to actually talk to the voice of Chucky himself. Now, how's it going today, sir? Um, uh, for a Sunday, way better than normal. Absolutely. Now, I mean, being at the 10th anniversary of Texas Frightmare, how'd it go for you? Um, better than any con I've been to. Absolutely, right? I mean, I, I believe that they actually do an amazing job with what they do through the 10 years that they've been here. Mm -hmm. And, you know, I've, first off, I mean, being that you've done the voice of Chucky, uh, the Lord of the Rings part, you know, obviously the Two Towers, what's been your favorite role throughout, you know, I, you've been in X-Files, uh, so I... I was kind of wondering, you, you've done all types of different genres, you know, fa anywhere from fantasy to horror to, you know, the, the, to drama to sci-fi. Mm -hmm. uh, what's your favorite? Uh, genre, I, I, you know, I, I don't really uh, concern myself with, I mean, with genre other than if there is a genre, it's a certain kind of an event which you have to be, and you have to be aware of the event. Yes, sir. But um, I'm usually intrigued by character. Uh, some things I, I like because they're difficult. And um, <coughs> difficulty, you know, forces you out of your box a little bit. And um, you tend to like the things that, uh, it, like it was really hard to do. I think uh, I th uh, the X-Files episode I had to do like 14 different characters. He moves, and not only that, they had to move from one one character into the next character into the next character and getting a flow from one I, I didn't think I was going to make it yes sir and uh, I remember um, at one point I thought of a woman I used to know when I was a child whose name was Mrs. Bro okay and when I added Mrs. Bro <laughs> to the mix right the whole thing miraculously fit together and I was I really you know was a this eureka moment and I got it I got it I got it and I and I went back in and uh, I think Jillian Anderson was in the was in the dressing room and I was very up and just chatty as she could be and she didn't even look at me wow okay and she just was like and then um, I thought I thought oh god she hates me and and then I went and did this thing and I thought and nobody even acted like I was there in a way, and I felt like, well, I, you know, I could always be a cab driver. Um, and, it, you know, it turned out that they, they loved what I was doing, and she and I uh, uh, connected, and, um, and it turned out to be a great experience. So the, I remember that, that whole thing quite fondly. Um, you know, Billy Bibbit was the, you know, was I think probably the most exciting because I was so young. Uh, um, I don't like to watch myself. I did watch myself in Lord of the Rings because I had to, and it's one of the few things I've done that I thought was actually watchable. I thought you did an, like an amazing job in Lord of the Rings. Yeah, and maybe because it was yeah. so different from myself that um, I could I could watch it but normally I cannot abide watching my acting I just makes my skin crawl <laughs> I understand I do uh, now doing Chucky one two and three I know we kind of talked off camera a little bit and you said your favorite movie was actually the seat of, uh, not the seat of Chucky but bride of Chucky. the bride the bride of Chucky mm -hmm. so uh, is there any reason why the bride of Chucky was actually your favorite just from an audience standpoint, yes, um, I, I watched it, and um, the way that uh, the um, uh, Bride of Frankenstein yeah. became part of something that actually drove the story, because it, you know, it meant so much to um, to Tiffany. Right. Um, that Jennifer it, Tilly was amazing. And Jennifer yeah. Tilly was amazing in it, and and also. You know, you go into a studio and do the whole movie okay. alone. You know, and for the first time, we had these um, we had these uh, you know booths with uh, glass in between us so that w our voices wouldn't spill over. And I got to act with Jennifer. That's awesome. And How um, is she? it was fun. Is it was she? really fun. She's very improvisational. Some of the best lines 
were stuff that, you know, that just came off the top of her head, you know, the whole thing about, do you have a rubber? Right. And, um, you know, <laughs> if I am a fucking rubber, you know, um, that whole thing was just, you know, improvisation. Well, uh, just curious. So now, I mean, I, I know you got to kind of get in character, and it takes a little bit of, uh, imp you know, improving on your part to be able to actually get into the voice of Chucky. Do uh, you have any specials, uh, special advice for the new upcoming film uh, film pr people in the new generation that maybe you could offer the new film people that are just coming into film? Don't do it. <laughs> <laughs> it <will> ruin you. <laughs> well, I know you don't have a lot of time, but I, I do at least want to ask you one last question. Um, now, with with the Chucky series in general, can, are, are we going to see you on screen anytime soon with a new version of Chucky? Or more of a, maybe a sequel to the last one? Uh, you know, my daughter kicked ass so much, I think we'll be seeing a lot of her. <laughs> yes, sir. Yes, sir. Well, thank you so much. I have one follow-up question, which is, if you had a favorite superpower, because you've been in every single genre, what would it be? Turning lead into gold. That's a good one, sir. <laughs> That's a good one. And, by the, by, by the way, never been said on Lotus Comics. Well, we really appreciate your time. Sure. Thank you very much for being on the show. Guys, come check out Lotus Comics Press. All of the 10th anniversary Texas Frightmare interviews will be on Lotus Comics Press here soon. Come check us out at LotusComics.com, and we will see you here real soon. Thank you. Bye-bye.